What's up, everybody? It's Taylor Twelman from Major League Soccer and Apple TV. No rest for the weary. As the international break meant some teams were shorthanded. But nonetheless, surprises continue to come in this league of parity. San Jose Earthquakes, Orlando City, and the Philadelphia Union all get their first wins of 2024. Which leads me to Twelman's Takes. I have to start in the Pacific Northwest in the concerning times with the Seattle Sounders. Four games in, winless. Four games in, they've scored four goals. Four games in, and a massive injury list for a team that didn't play in any CONCACAF competitions to begin the year. Things just aren't right. So much so that even Stefan Fry returning to the lineup behind their best back four, they still give up two first half goals to the last play zero point San Jose Earthquakes. And then to make matters worse, after clawing back to level the game from two goals down, you give up a game winner 55 seconds later? Brutal. But the issue for me, it's twofold. One, this team's experience and understanding of what it takes to win in this league has always emphasized the defensive side of things. Every piece of arguably the best defensive team in the league a year ago returns in 2024, and yet this team continues to be sloppy. Their goalkeeper, no matter who it is, continuously making saves, but nobody tracks runners, leaving themselves vulnerable to tap-ins. Concerning, to say the least, when you've got the experienced players that I was talking about. But the second point is the bigger one. Seattle have made the playoffs 14 of 15 seasons in Major League Soccer, and in the only season they missed, who got hurt? Jao Paulo in 2022. He has yet to play this year, and with each passing game, it is more evident to me and to anyone watching the Seattle Sounders that he's the most important player for this team. And it's crazy to think about that because the experienced veterans that I talked about, they all look a little lost without JP on the field. If he can't get healthy, the question will be, can Brian Schmetzer find a way to get this team to, quote, stop shooting ourselves in the foot, end quote. His words, not mine. Only time will tell. Now, we talked about the international break, and in the league of parity, you will always get surprises. But when that international break comes around, those surprises are exponential because of those absences. Now, side note, I'm in the camp. Games don't need to be played anymore during the international break because Major League Soccer is a better league now than when I played. And the more internationals are coming here to make this their league of choice means during the international break, they've got to go play for their country. But the biggest surprise of the weekend, none bigger than the Philadelphia Union dismantling the Portland Timbers in Portland. Philadelphia was missing six starters due to the international duty, only four outfield players on the bench, and they made one sub. One sub. And they still scored three. They still scored three in front of Timbers Army. Sure, surprised the hell out of me. I thought Jim Curtin said it best. Quote, this group tends to be at their best when maybe they're counted out. End quote. Case in point, Saturday in the Rose City. What's crazy about the Philadelphia Union under Jim Curtin is how consistent they've been. Since 2020, when Nashville and Inter-Miami came into MLS, no team has been better in the attack and in the defense. What does that mean? They've scored more goals and conceded the least in that same time frame. And all of that without really spending any serious money. Now, I'm on the record and will stay on the record. I think this will be the toughest year from Jim Curtin and company. No new signings, potential sales of a couple players this summer means 2024 is going to be a grind. But they seem to relish it more than most, as Jim Curtin just told me. So count them out at your own peril. LAFC were off to the worst start in franchise history. Four points in the first four games, and the sky is falling. Which says a lot about how good they've been from day one of their existence. While I wasn't worried about this team, I'm not going to lie. I was skeptical and still am. Let me explain. Over 300 minutes without a goal scored for a team that has made goal scoring their calling card. Since coming into the league in 2018, they've scored more goals than anyone else. 70 more goals than the second place Philadelphia Union in that same time frame. Quite something. But in 2024, there is a concern for me and for anyone else that if Bowanga doesn't score, then LAFC won't. He had one of the best seasons in MLS history last year with 54, 54 goal contributions. But he's off to a weird start this year, missing chances he normally doesn't after coming into camp late, chasing match fitness, and chasing a new contract. Come this weekend, he's fit, he's got a new deal, and no surprise, two goals, one assist against Nashville to lead LAFC to a 5-0 victory. He actually... Should have scored four to be 
to be honest. But that's not the point. The point is my skepticism, or dare I say, uneasiness. It still remains solely because for the first time in their history, they're thin when it comes to the roster. Turnover's never been an issue for this team, and neither has the ability to build a team that competes to 16, 17 players deep. Multiple positions filled with players capable of playing week in and week out. Now, that is the case right now, right? Some of that is out of their control with salary cap and the success they've had over the last two years. But this is also a team that has two DP spots open, which in my mind should never be the case for LAFC. You are LAFC, the trendsetters of Major League Soccer. Now, I don't have an issue if those spots are being left open to be filled this summer window because you have more options to sign players. Seattle Sounders have done that better than anyone else. If they take that route, no problem. But this summer, LAFC better be all in. Copa America Euros, they end July 15th. Who will be their nine? Their wingers? Who will be sold? Can they get deeper on the back line? These are all questions that most likely won't be answered until this summer, which means Steve Terundolo and LAFC, they've got to fight their way to get to that point. Now, I think five goals versus Nashville should help get this team rolling. And finally, the best thing I saw this weekend, the New York Red Bulls and Lewis Morgan. See, all the talk coming into their game versus Inter Miami was who would not be there for Miami, and yet it was the Red Bulls who were missing more starters than Miami. Now, Lewis Morgan originally came to Major League Soccer for Inter Miami, but when they needed to reset their roster, they shipped him off to New York. He missed almost all of 2023 with hip surgery, yet Saturday, he got revenge on his former club. A hat trick, leading a team that has surprised many, including myself, to a strong start in 2024. Now, Morgan is tied for MLS as a top scorer with five goals in five games. His teammate, Dante Van Zier, became the first player in club history to have four assists in one game, which now leads all of Major League Soccer with five. I like the way the Red Bulls are competing. And imagine, imagine if this summer they go out and get themselves a bona fide number nine. An MLS record 15 straight playoff appearances could easily be something they achieve. Now, you can watch Lewis Morgan, the New York Red Bulls, this weekend as they travel to Orlando City in an Eastern Conference battle, as well as Nashville will host the defending champion Columbus Crew, which is where I will be all of these games on MLS Season Pass on the Apple TV app. As for my podcast, Offside, I will talk with former New York Red Bulls and U.S. Men's National Team player Sasha Kleschen. He made his return to the game in the U.S. Open Cup for the Des Moines Menace, along with giving you my takes on all things Major League Soccer. You can listen and subscribe and Apple Podcasts.